Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to be going over uh, the First Presidency's uh, Christmas message. And uh, there's a couple interesting things here I want to point out. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video. If you end up liking it, hit the notification bell, uh, leave your comments, and please make sure to share this. So, um, okay, the First Presidency of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, President Russell M. Nelson, President Dallin H. Oaks, and President Henry B. Eyring released the following following Christmas message on Friday, November 26th. Um, <clears throat> it was shared across several church communication channels. Now, um, I think that right now is a good time to actually go over this because uh, tomorrow is when there's going to be the um, like the, the, the Christmas devotional that they do every year. And ho hopefully there will be some interesting th things there. Um, so we'll just have to all watch and see and then I'll I'll make sure to comment on it afterwards. Uh, with whatever notes I take down. So, <clears throat> okay, so here, here's the message right here. It's these two little paragraphs. Uh, well, when we sing Silent Night, we know the life of that babe of Bethlehem did not begin there, uh, nor did it end on Calvary. Um, in a pre-mortal realm, Jesus was foreordained by his Father to be the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior, and Redeemer of all humankind. He was foreordained to atone for us, uh, he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. Uh, and then they put Isaiah 53, 5. Everybody's familiar with this one. Uh, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Okay. Uh, he came to make immortality a reality and eternal life a possibility uh, for all who would ever live. Okay, because we know that everyone gets resurrected, right? And uh, we expect that, the, you know, the morning of the first resurrection is probably pretty close because we, we think that the second coming is pretty close. Um, and then the possibility of eternal life or exaltation, uh, of course, was made possible by him. And, you know, we also know that there there's kind of a, you know, judgment that's coming, at least for those that are living a, a telestial life law right now because they won't be moving on into the millennium now uh check this out first corinthians 15 20 to 22 all right first let's go up here and read the chapter heading christ died for our sins he rose from the dead and was seen by many uh, all men will be resurrected paul speaks of baptism for the dead uh that's something that they really really want us to be doing right now is temple work the three degrees of glory are described. Victory over death comes through Christ. Now, here's the, the two verses, or sorry, the three verses. Uh, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. And, and we know that one of the seven uh, Jewish feasts is the Feast of First Fruits, right? So whenever you see that, or whenever I see that, that's what I think of. Um, for since by men, since by man, came death, right? And, you know, that's basically talking about Adam uh, that initiated this process. So, uh, for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Now, <clears throat> you guys, I think that whenever they do messages like this it's not just like a feel-good message it's and there, there's a reason why they put these references uh these scriptures in there because you know they want us to go and look at it for ourselves and uh maybe maybe that's because uh there's a little bit of a additional message that they're that they're trying to send and that's what i think here okay they could have like chosen any number of scriptures but they chose this one right here where it's talking about the fact that um adam was the one that made made uh, or initiated mortality essentially for us, and we know that one of the key events that's coming up um, is Adam on Diamond, right? So they're they're choosing a scripture that talks about how uh, the role of Adam uh, and then his relation to Christ, and then look at this if you if you keep reading down, uh, but by every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits afterward they that are christ at his coming 
the very next verse, verse 23, it's talking about his coming. And what coming is that? Oh, it's talking about <clears throat> Jesus Christ, second coming, topical, topical guide. Um, then cometh the end uh, when we shall, when he shall be, sorry, then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when we have put down all rule and all authority and all power. And, uh, you know, I, that makes me think of uh, Daniel, right? Interpreting King Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the, the statue. We know that the, these earthly kingdoms, they're, they're going to fall. They're, they're going to um, uh, basically give way. To, to Christ's kingdom. I, I wonder if they actually, I'll bet they, I wonder if they, um, one of these footnotes goes to, yeah, here, look right here, uh, Daniel 2, 44. In the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. And then another Daniel scripture. Um, all right. For he must reign till he <clears throat> hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Okay. So interesting. Very, very, very interesting. Because again, if they wanted to do a resurrection scripture, um, there's plenty of, of uh, scriptures in the Book of Mormon that they could have chose from. There's other ones in the New Testament. Uh, that they could have chose from, uh, but they chose this particular chapter, which references um, the second coming uh, in relation to the resurrection. It also happens to mention Adam, and then it also mention, mentions the idea of uh, the three deg degrees of glory, which is key to understand, to like understand what's about to happen on the earth. It's only going to be terrestrial and celestial uh, law-abiding people that are going to be moving forward into the millennium. Uh, okay, so they referenced 3rd Nephi 27, <clears throat> uh, verses 13 and 14. Uh, behold, I gave, <clears throat> sorry, behold, I have given unto you my gospel, and this is the gospel which I have given unto you, that I came into the world to do the will of my Father, because my Father sent me. And my Father sent me that I might be lifted up upon the cross, and after that, I had been lift, lifted up on the cross, that I might draw all men unto me. That as I have been lifted up by men, even so uh, should men be lifted up by the Father to stand before me, to be judged of their works, uh, whether they be good or whether they be evil. So, <clears throat> this, you know, it, it kind of lightly talks about um, resurrection, right? But, it, but it's also kind of like... The, like, I'm not so sure you would call this, like, if you were just to, like, pick this out at random, uh, you would be like, oh, yeah, this is a resurrection scripture. It sounds more like um, a judgment, more more like a judgment scripture, right? If we go back to the first president, presidency message, um, at the end of this paragraph here, talking about immortality, uh, meaning the resurrection and the possibility of eternal, eternal life, um, I guess that makes sense that, you know, the, these totally match up with that. It's talking about the resurrection, but also the resurrection and the judgment. And again, there, there's a coming judgment that, that's coming up. There's a resurrection that's coming up and a judgment for uh, the wicked. Um, I also find it interesting that, you know, this is in 3 Nephi 27. So this is after Christ's coming to the Nephites and the Lamanites. Um which we know is a foreshadowing of what? The second coming. So, um, very, very interesting scriptures to choose. Um, and then to finish it off, at this sacred Christmas season, we testify that our, love, our loving Heavenly Father so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe, believeth in him should not perish, perish but have everlasting life. So uh, that's it. It's just a little thing to notice, but I thought I would put that out there. Um, uh, this is just another breadcrumb, I guess you could say, I, th I think. Uh, I really do think that they chose this 1 Corinthians scripture on purpose and put it out to the church and hope that people would 
read this and maybe read on and read the rest of the chapter. And um, yeah. All right. So I'll just end it there. Um, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video. If you liked it, hit the notification bell. Uh, leave your comments with your thoughts if you if you think I'm right about this. Um, did anything else hit you? Uh, do you have any other uh, ideas? And um, I'll talk to you guys later.